Good morning, boys and girls, and whoever else may be watching this. I am so glad that you've joined me this morning for the pool. And I just want to tell you that we gather together today to, to learn that we worship God because God encourages us. He has left his word that encourages us. His very presence ought to be an encouragement to us. He puts people in our lives that, that bring encouragement to us. And that is what we're going to talk about today that we're going to focus on. And so uh, you're going to need your Bibles. We are leaving behind the, the person of Moses. And we're getting ready to enter into the the promised land that, that God gave to, to the Israelites. And with the death of Moses, there's going to be a new leader for Israel. Could you imagine having to follow Moses as the leader of Israel? I mean, here's Moses. He's the one that confronted Pharaoh. He's the one that God used to do miracles. He's the one that, that provided them food and water, manna. Uh, he's the one that went up on the mountain and talked with God. And, and um, we didn't talk about it in our lessons, but when he came down from the mountain from talking with God, there was a glow about him from being in the presence of God, from being in the glory of God. And, and he came down and he carried the Ten Commandments. He carried the, the, the word that God had literally written upon those stones. And so Moses is dying. Moses is dead. And, and it's time for a new leader in Israel. Would you want to follow Moses? I know I wouldn't. Let's, let's pray. And then I'm going to help you turn to the book of Joshua. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the time that we can spend in your word. I pray, Lord, that we would learn from your word, that we would learn that you are the God that encourages us. And, and I just pray that even being here today and doing this lesson, that we would be encouraged. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so uh, I'm going to help you find your, your, your way in the Bible. So I hope that uh, you have your Bible. If you don't, pause and go grab your Bible. I'll wait just a moment here. I am glad that you're back. Uh, so we are going to be in the book of Joshua this morning, Joshua chapter 1. So uh, Old Testament, that, that first Two-thirds of your Bible, remember the Bible's divided into two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. So it's the sixth book of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. And, and so that's how you can find Joshua. And we're going to see how God encourages Joshua. Let me just kind of give you an example. What, what do you say that, that something happens to me? And so Pastor Joe gives you a call and he says, you're up. Pastor Charles has died. Oops. And we need somebody that can take his place. And you're going to do that. Now, I know your, your first argument might be, hey, I'm, I'm only in third grade. I'm only in fourth grade, fifth grade, kindergarten. Pastor Joe, I'm a preschooler. You know what? He said that he believes that, that God wants you to take my place. Would that be scary? Maybe a little intimidating? Frightening? Maybe you're, you're, you're thinking of all the things, all the reasons why you can't do it. Well, the very word encourage, it, it means to give courage. To encourage. To, to give a person confidence. To give a person hope. And, and, and God wants us to know that when he is for us, that it doesn't matter who's against us. And so let's, let's see Joshua and how God encourages, gives Joshua hope, confidence, and courage. So Joshua chapter 1, beginning in verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, 
Moses is eight. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. That's the Mediterranean. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. All right, a couple of thoughts here as we just hear the beginning of, of God's talk with, with Joshua. The, the first thing is that, that God promises Joshua and the Israelites that he's going to give them all the land that Joshua walked on. Do you remember when Joshua walked in the promised land? He was one of the 12 spies. He and Caleb came back and gave a good report and said, this is the land that God's given us. It's a good land. Let's go in and take it. The other 10 spies said, no, we can't take it. There's giants in the land. Well, now God's telling Joshua once again, go in, take the land. I'm, that I've given you, the land that you've walked on. I, I am going to be with you just as I was with Moses. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Oh, that's quite a promise to think that God, the, the creator God, the God that spoke everything into existence, the God that holds it together, the one who named the stars has promised us that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, gets better. Verse 6. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the, le to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So once again, three times God tells Joshua, be strong and create courageous. Did you notice the other thing that God told him to do? Spend time in, in my word. Spend time in the Bible. Meditate on it. Meditate means to think on it. It means to, to memorize it. And as we memorize it, we, we can think think on it, we can chew on it, not literally, but figuratively. We can, we can think about what it says and what it means and how God will bring it about in our lives and in the lives of those about us. And, and he says, be careful to do it. So we're not only to meditate on it, to think on it, but we're to do it, we're to obey it. We're not to turn to the left we're not to turn to the right, but we're to do what God has commanded us to do. Oh, that's a big challenge, isn't it? But God, remember, told Joshua and tells us, be strong and courageous, for I am with you. God doesn't just tell us to do his word and then leave us alone. He encourages us. He helps us. He's with us. He won't forsake us. So what do you think Joshua's response was after God told him, you're going to be the next leader of Israel. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Do my word. Oh, I bet, yep, you're right. Joshua did the word of God. Here, look at, with me. Verse 10. So Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people, get your supplies ready. Three days from now, we'll cross the Jordan 
here to go in and take possession of the land your God is or the land the Lord your God is giving for his own. Mo well, Joshua did it. He went about the people and he told them, get ready, get prepared. We're going in. In three days, we're going in to, to possess the land that the Lord your God is giving you. All right, now I want to show you one other thing that's really cool about this. Not only does God encourage us, but God puts other people in our lives that encourage us. Go down to verse 16 of chapter 1. Then they answered Joshua. These are the, the Reubenites. This is one of the tribes of Israel. They actually are going to take their possession of land on the side of the Jordan River that they're on right now. So they're, they're taking possession of the land that they already occupy. And, and Joshua has told them, remember that Moses made you promise that you would go and help your brothers, the rest of the tribes, get their land as well. And so here's what they said to Joshua. Whatever you have commanded us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we fully obeyed Moses, so we will obey you. Only... May the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them, command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. So Joshua reminds them of what they had made, the promise they had made as a good leader would. And they said, we're going to follow you. Whatever you tell us to do, we're going to do. Wherever you go, we're going to follow you. And if any of us rebel, may that person be put to death. Does that not sound like they're fully behind them? And then they echo the same words that God had told him. Only be strong and courageous. You know, we face a lot of scary situations in life. There are times where we have to take classes we might not be good at. Or we might have to give a speech. Or maybe we go through some hard times. Maybe mom and dad, they, they get a divorce. Or maybe oh, somebody that we really care about, they, they move away. Or even worse, they die. It's at times like that we need to remember that God is with us, that God is for us, that God encourages us. In fact, uh, not only does God encourage us, God wants us to encourage others. In 1 Thessalonians, in the New Testament, in 1 Thessalonians 5.11, it says, let me, let me turn there. It's a really good verse for, for the transition to the activity I want to do with you. It says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. You know, there is so much power in our words. And, and that we need to use those words in, in such a way as to encourage one another. To, to give one hope. To give someone confidence. To give someone courage. And, and that's what God wants us to use our words for and our actions for. We're to build one another up. And, and so I have... I have some big old blocks here. And we are going to use, we're going to build upon these. I'm going to give you some verses from God's word that encourage us, that build us up. And as we do so, I am going to build a tower. Okay? So, do you have doubts and fears? I know I do. And I know that you're probably a lot like me and that you do. Listen to what God tells us in Isaiah 41.10. 
So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. Yeah, God is with us and he strengthens us and he encourages us. And so our tower is getting a little bigger. Those words of encouragement. Are you ever unhappy? Hmm. Listen to what this says in Nehemiah 8.10. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. That even when we go through hard times and we're sad or even unhappy, that we can have the joy of the Lord. So, do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Here's another block. And you know what? My tower is getting a little taller. It won't be long before you'll be able to see it. Do you need protection? Do you need someone to watch over you? Genesis 28, 15, God says, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. God is always with us. And he watches over us. And wherever we go, he's with us. Oh, my tower is getting better. It's getting bigger. Hmm. What about when we don't feel good? What about with sickness? Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord who heals you. You know, one of the, the titles of God is Raphael. That means the God who hear, uh, heals. Now, that doesn't mean that God will take every sickness away from us, but it does mean that, that God will be with us through that sickness. In fact, sometimes God heals us he gives us the best healing there is by taking us to heaven where illness and sickness will never bother us again. But God is the God who heals. Oh, what about feeling insecure? Feeling as if you're, you're not good enough, that you, you can't do it. Remember how Moses talked about how God needed to find somebody else because he couldn't speak? Oh, what a, what a great spokesman he turned out to be. I got to put another block on before we move on to the next one. My tower is now visible, isn't it? So here's what Philippians 4.13 says. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ. Now, when it says all things, I can't go to the top of the building, jump off and fly, can I? No. But when I have to give a speech, you know, I'm, I'm going to preach tomorrow. Well, I'm recording this on Saturday. I'm going to preach today on a Sunday. And I need God's help. If it was all dependent on me and my words, then we would be in big trouble. But because... I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I know that God will give me the words to say. And so the tower gets a little bit bigger. So we have quite the tower going, don't we? Oh, what about when we're lonely? There are times where we feel like we don't have any friends or nobody cares. Again, Hebrews 13, 5, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Just as, as God made that promise to Joshua, he makes that promise to us in the New Testament. That God is always with us. Where we, yeah, there are times where we can be alone, but we don't have to be lonely. Are you sad about something? God says, I, even I am he who comforts you. God is the one makes things better for us. Hmm. What about peace? Uh, maybe, maybe you're going through a difficult time at home or at school or with friends where you just don't seem to be getting along with anybody. And the peace of God, 
which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That through Jesus, God gives us peace that transcends. That means it goes beyond all understanding and it guards our hearts and minds that we can make the right decisions on how to treat people because of God's peace. Do you need a friend? Proverbs 13.20 says, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm getting behind again. All right, I got I to gotta count and make sure I'm caught up. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we're, we're all caught up. Um, my tower's getting big. As you search the scriptures, you find that God gives us words of encouragement. Here's what he says about friends. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. So if we want, if we want to have friends, we've got to have the right friends. We want friends that are wise. Uh, Proverbs also goes on to tell us that the beginning of, of wisdom, or that wis, the, yeah, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. That when we want to please God, when we want to, when we're in awe of God, that's when we get wise. Oh, what about temptation? Every one of us faces temptation. Uh, Romans 8.37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That Jesus is the one that conquers temptation for us when we trust in him. And so I have quite the tower, don't I? I want to share one more verse with you before we close. And I want you to think that... that Almost every part of our lives we just gave a verse for. That God is with us. God puts other people in our lives to encourage us. So that we will be built up. Remember 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Encourage one another and build one another up. Our words either build up or they tear down. And so we want to build up. Our final verse and our final piece. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. In the old days, in, in the days of the Bible, when they were writing it, in Israel they would build towers. And they would use these towers as a, a, a they would put lookouts on the top of them and they would be able to spot danger. And when a person was in danger, they could run to these towers. And these towers were big enough, wide enough, that you could actually go into them. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. We have a place of safety. And that's the Lord. That wherever we go, whatever we do, whoever we're with, we, God is always with us. And he wants us to, to encourage other people. And I hope that as you, as you think about this lesson today, that you are encouraged. That you will be strong and courageous as you go about your day, as you go about your week. Because God is with you. And he's put other people in your life to encourage you as well. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that, that you are with us. God, we thank you that you strengthen us and you help us be strong and courageous, that you give us your word, that, that we might search it out and find words of hope and encouragement and courage. Lord, I thank you that you are a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe. Lord, I thank you that you put other people into our lives that they might encourage us, that we might encourage them and be built up and build them up. Lord, I pray for each person that hears my voice today that they would be encouraged by you and by one another. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I hope that you have a good week and that we will see you soon. Bye.